interesting edition of the program Dialogue, reaching you from the stables of liberty. The name remains Abdel Aziz Ahmed Kader. Well, a lot of issues within the polity. I'm sure you won't be wondering what we will be talking about today. But then, let's leave politics aside. Well, of course, you can't discuss what we want to discuss today without politics coming into it. What is the issue? Migration. Uh, we are yet to overcome the killing of the 20 plus travelers in Plateau states. Uh, of course, you know what has been going on in the Plateau. Uh, the southern part of Kaduna had, is having its own issue too. Who is a migrant? Who is an indigent? Who is a settler? You know, various names you will give to it. But then, like I always ask, who isn't a migrant? Who did God actually create? Where he is now, just dropped him or had that. Definitely, it will be difficult to say. So we are all migrants. By the way, who is going to live in the world forever? Even do even if you are given the the age of uh, what's the name? I'm sure eventually you will go. So we shall be looking at the issue of migration today. A lot of issues, a lot of issues around migration that sometimes we actually misrepresent. They never meant Abdel Aziz Ahmed Kadri. Well, my guests are already seated in the studio from my immediate left. We have uh, Osato Mary Ibidosan. She's the program officer, Civil Society Network on Mitigation and Development, on Migration, I beg your pardon, and uh, Development, uh, known in short as a CSO Net Met. Well, Mary, good to have you here. Thank you very in much. In our studios. Okay. We we'll also have the Northwest Coordinator of uh, CSO NetMed and it's also the Senior Program Officer, CAPCARE Foundation, talking about Umaru Abdul Wahab. Well, good to have you here with us. Thank you so much. My All right. pleasure. All right. I, I think I better start from you. It's a ladies' post. I'll start from you. When we talked about migration, or we, let me even start from migration, what, what, what is the simple definition of migration? Uh, I want to say migration, it has to do with, uh, based on uh, the laws that is embedded in the national uh, policy of migration, which was uh, instituted in 2014, uh, 2015, I beg your pardon. Uh, it has to do with when someone moves from one commit state, one state to another, relocating for at least a minimum of uh, between uh, six months and above. Okay. Yes, according to the law. And uh, also, if it also has to go outside the statutory boundaries, that is internationally, that also that person is a migrant. Okay. Well, well uh, Mary, I'll come to you. We, I, I'm just wondering, because when we say move from one state to the other, uh, states now in terms of national, how long will it take? Uh, I mean, I'm just imagining I just traveled to Lagos. Mm -hmm. I spent three, four, five, six months. I mean, does that make me a migrant? Yes, like what he said earlier, the underlying feature for migration is the fact that there's a change of residence from your habitual okay. place of residence. Okay. So if you change from where you ordinarily reside to another location to start residing there, then you are a migrant. So it could be an internal migrant, like what the example you cited, moving from where you are to Lagos State, okay. or it could be an international migrant when you cross an international border. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, what, there are a lot of issues when we talk about this uh, issue of uh, migration. But of course, we know the problem we are having now with the farmers' headers clash. We know the issues we are having now with the issue of banditry, kidnapping, and what have you. But of course, one issue, I, I remember the, when Libya came to the news, incidentally, Afghanistan is in the news again now. We don't know how many Nigerians are in Afghanistan, for instance. We'll start talking about returning them is another issue. But what is actually the problem of migration? When we talked about migration as a problem, well, uh, migration, it's a natural phenomenon. Okay. Uh, there's, no, there's nothing bad migrating. Okay. It's a fundamental human right to migrate wherever you want to migrate to. From your former place of abode, your former place you reside, to another state or community or uh, uh, another country. But the issue there is uh, the, the process 
of your movement. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, it's the, one of the key underlying factor, uh, which has to do with most especially for international migration. When you're moving, how do you go about it? Mm -hmm. uh, do you go there in a very legitimate way? And if you do, having the required documents, visa and the rest that is expected of you, yeah. that means, and you are allowed and you come into that country, that means you are what? A regular migrant. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And stay for the period of time you plan or you intend staying, uh, settling over there. But the issue there is, uh, we also have issues just like she said before, the internal migrants or migration uh, from state to state, mostly as a citizen of this country. You have every life based on the uh, stipulated law to move from one state to another and settle there. Uh, the issue has been more of um, the, the activities, the fear, the hate uh, of uh, the host community. community. Yeah, the, this uh, xenophobia and uh, they tend to feel that you have come to take what they have, uh, which is not. Uh, I always say this, everybody I have been to that uh, migration has more of positive side in terms of development, in terms of uh, political development, or economic development. They have added a lot. No community can build on its own without migrants. Migration plays a key factor. But the negative part is that when few elements migrate mm -hmm. and they tend to be a nuisance, which it's an uh, inevitable thing at times, but what you're looking at is address how to manage it uh, in, the con in that context. So for we, yeah, within the internal migration, uh, within the country, country. it's uh, how best we sensitize our people uh, to see how this is done in a very orderly manner. Okay. Okay. Well, well that, that brings us to this issue of what some people will term, will term illegal migrants. <laughs> and, uh, you, you know, I know you are laughing because people will come and say, well, these are illegal migrants. Do we have anything like illegal migrants? All right. Um, that's like one common thing we see every time. I'm sure when you go on the internet now, you type illegal migrants, you get to see pictures of people on the sea, yes. people crossing via the Sahara Desert and Mediterranean Sea. So it's important for us to state here that the term illegal as it is, is criminalizing. Okay. We should remember that as humans, it's our fundamental human right, both internationally and our local laws, gives you the right to move from one place to you have the freedom of movement per se. So the fact that I move do not make me an illegal migrant because the term illegal is criminalizing. Okay. And of course, because I move does not make me a criminal. Yeah. So the correct term to use is irregular. Irregular okay. because there's a process that ought to be followed that you did not follow. So when you see people in such states, rather refer to them as Irregular migrants, exactly. Okay, I'm quite interested that because the way we say, okay, you are coming into my country illegally. But <laughs> 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 we, we, we know within, within Nigeria there is no law that says from I mean moving from point A to point B, I must possess certain particulars. But except maybe I'm driving in a, in a vehicle, which means my vehicle particulars must be in order. Even though we know there are issues that are coming up now, state A will say they have certain particulars you need to have. And state B will say, of course, there are certain particulars you need to have. So moving from state A to state B, which is another entire another issue again that, that shouldn't even arise. Within Africa, we know the ECOWAS protocol also allows for that free, 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 free movement. Yes. But then let's look at the problems around um, migration, because whether we like it or not, well, uh, Mr. Moro just said it. No, no society develops without visitors, without migrants, or let me, let me know, it's without migrants, for instance. Even the almighty United States becomes what it is today due to migration, even if it will be slave trade, for instance. So what are some of these issues that have to do, that we can see as a problem, that it's, that we need to mitigate as far as migration is concerned? Yeah, I think, uh, one key thing I do advocate for, yeah. because uh, is in the aspect of uh, awareness and sensitization. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, there's an inherent uh, mindset of our people 
uh, I think also of the general society. The sentiment. The, the sentiment. Uh, feeling, thinking that uh, uh, migrants, uh, uh, they have all these negative intentions when they come to stay in your community. Uh, they, that has been creating a lot of hate and xenophobia uh, across the globe. We remember the case of the South Africa South recently with mm -hmm. Nigerians and uh, other can commit countries also. So what uh, is key there is for we to have more sensitization okay. and awareness creation, even at uh, the uh, tertiary and the primary schools. Uh, communities are homes. They need to get the message clear. Okay. Uh, as we're all seated here, if we trace our history, we realize that uh, it's either we all have migratory uh, roots. Either you're born, uh, born, for example, I was born in Kano State. My, my parents uh, were from uh, Edo State. So you see, by the statutory laws, I'm a citizen of that state, Kano. Then, also, my father's uh, paternal side migrated from Niger. Okay. So if you go on and on, you see that there are a lot of uh, traces from other states. Then also, you can, if you go for like four, five, six generations, you discover that some have been coming, their uh, grandparents are coming from uh, other West African countries. countries or South African, Southern part of the African countries, or even uh, in Europe. I, I think I was, there was a study recently and uh, some few group of white people were checking their DNA and they realized that uh, they are, they are used, their ancestry route was traceable to Africa. I think some Nigeria and other parts of uh, African uh, countries. So you can see that we all are migrants in the real sense. We are all migrants. So for the fact that you've stayed and over the years in the community or born there, your parents are born there, doesn't mean that you are not having these migratory routes. So we need to sensitize people to understand that we all have this link. Then appreciate that fact. Then see how best we could harness migrants' potentials, and which is the hallmark of it. At the time people are well sensitized, definitely we are helping, because you can never stop migration. You can't. So it's a, it's a fundamental thing. So it's just better, more sensitization, more strengthening the structures uh, where the coordinating agency, like uh, the NCF, my dad, is National Commission for uh, uh, Refugees, Migrants, and IDPs, and other sister agencies and stakeholders can strengthen the structures and do more. We'll, we'll, we'll come to the roles of some of these agencies. Okay. Uh, well, well, maybe let me come to you. Probably we're going to trace Mary, maybe we'll trace our ancestral home to, to, to Moroni State. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, but, but again, when we talk about some of these issues, because I, I've always said it on this platform that sometimes we end up having people in leadership position that maybe we're not even prepared to be in leadership position. Because if at this stage I'm going to have a governor who will still be talking about indigenship at this 21st century, then the, but what is the problem between, I mean, what is the correlation between governance and migration? Okay, thank you very much. We should know that every aspect of governance, every aspect of our lives is being run by the governance, so governance sort of. So even migration has a governance structure also. Okay. The government manages migration through the coordinating agency, as my colleague just said, that is the NCFRMI. Okay. So in their role, they try to coordinate everything concerning migration, migration. be it trafficking, be it um, smuggling, be it returning, be it reintegration, whatever it is that has IDPs, whatever it is that has to do with migrants as a whole, the NCFRMI, through the technical working group platform, the National Migration Governance Structure, okay. they tend to manage migration well. So like my colleague also said, migration should not always, be, it's not a problem really. Like we always say in migration sphere, that migration is the most faceted phenomenon that if managed well, mm -hmm. would bring about development. So that's what we're saying, we're clamoring, we're saying that migration brings about development. 
We should always have the mindset that what we hear migration, the nesting is dangerous, the nesting is sea, the nesting mm -hmm. is people dying in the desert. There's more to that. We hear of the figures that come in as remittances annually. We see what migrants are doing. These houses we build, these clothes we have are mm -hmm. all evidences or outcome of migration. Okay. Well, what, uh, this is let me come to you. I'm mean, quite interested in that. What's the correlation between migration, tourism, and um, the business, uh, I would say, commerce? Okay. Uh, I think uh, the, we'll first look at the similarities. Mm. Uh, the, the, the similarities that they, are, they moved from okay. point A to point okay. B, either for the purpose of uh, resettling in another community then they all move. But for the resettling, uh, the, the migrant status is different in the sense that he stays more longer and tends to stay for most of the uh, parts of his years, if he wish, but at least a period of uh, three, six months and above. But, and he gets into other businesses, nevertheless. While for the business partners, those that are just going for business purposes, mm -hmm. going to other states or countries, this does a clear mobility okay. or tourism. We just go, for example, want to go to the United States of America, have fun, do shopping. Some even some of our citizens even go and give birth there, mm -hmm. feel they trust the health system. Yeah. So that is it. So the difference is one staying. The other one just brief and coming back. The other one is establishing himself there into businesses and having his uh, building up his uh, business structures or families and all that as much as long as possible. Okay. Yes. Okay. Well, Gary, let me put the question. You know, we have a popular saying in other part of Nigeria that any village you went to or you go to and you don't see an evil man, don't stay in that village. <laughs> it's not a safe place to stay for instance. Yeah. But well, of course, even that is it. Even as as jokingly as that sounds, mm -hmm. there is a message in it. So when we look at migration and the development of an area, and the business, I mean, uh, uh, premises of such places, then tourism again, because nobody just stand up and say I'm going on tourism to a place that maybe has nothing to to, to show for it. So how can we link migration, commerce, and even tourism? That is a okay. money-making venture for some, money spinner for some, for some countries. Okay, yeah, so in as much as tourism, commerce brings the bad mm -hmm. increased revenue for these countries where it happens, yes. we must always try not to mix up migration and mobility. Okay. Even if migration, if mobility is a process to migration, because you have to move from mm -hmm. point A to mm -hmm. B to be a migrant, mm -hmm. but depends on how long you stay. If we want to start classifying business persons or tourists as mm -hmm. migrants, Meaning we'll start classifying um, commercial bus drivers as migrants too. Okay. Meaning they move every time. Imagine driving your bus from Kano to Lagos today. So we used to say are the migrants of Lagos today, from Lagos again mm -hmm. tomorrow in Edo. Mm -hmm. You will not say you are a migrant of Edo State. The underlying future we should always try to remember is change of residence. Mm -hmm. Yes. Being a tourist, I just go there, have fun, enjoy my time, spend my money, invest, and increase the revenue. That's fine. The the tourist, that I'm not a, a tourist may end up being, being, being a resident of such areas. Over time. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. yeah. there are things that are attractive or hard. Yeah. I mean, there are pull factors, like you say, for recent. Yeah. Okay. Well, 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 let, me, let me come to you. Oh. You know, she, she mentioned remittances. Yes. And once you just mention remittance, remittance, one name that comes to your mind is Amike Dabiri. <laughs> <laughs> because that is one person who will always tell you the remittances were this year from diaspora and what's in But when we talk about remittance, what do we actually mean by remittance? Okay. Uh, the remittance has to do with uh, the fund and um, technology and other form of gesture support. Okay that is being done by diaspora. And diasporas are migrants that are in their country of uh, destination, okay. that are sending money, cash, those that go through banks, uh, other means Western Union transfer, and other means of uh, uh, sending this money, 
and other materials. Okay. So it's not limited to money. It's not limited to money. Okay. To their family members okay. and friends in their country of uh, host. I mean, in their, in their country of origin. Origin. Okay. Yes. So those they they we have had series of these remittances. It has been high quite a number of time. A lot of benefits. And um, some will go to the point of I could remember some cases where there's a medical care support uh, system. Yeah. They will come in, do some operation, yes, okay. operations on free of charge at times. So some to strengthen some of the uh, uh, health care support issues we have here. And also some also technological uh, support, bringing gadgets to support uh, some schools and some uh, institutions uh, in their own way. So this is another form of remittance, not only on monetary basis. Okay, okay. Well, what, what would it, it's, uh, may I go to you, uh, again, when we talked about again, you know, we always speak about the issue of diaspora voting is always that. I mean, people have been advocating for that. Let's have the, the I mean, diaspora voting. Uh, these are people. But who is actually, because what, uh, Mr. Wood just mentioned country of destination, country of origin. Uh, I just want to talk like, to you. For, I want you to clarify that for us. I mean, where is the country of origin? Where is the country of destination? And uh, who is actually a diaspora? Okay, for um, the country of origin, just as an instance, I'm sure so many of us are used to filling forms and was the state of origin. origin yeah. Of course, so your country of origin is the sending country where you move from. Okay. So if you are leaving point A, country A to country D, so your country of origin is country A, where you move from. Then the destination country is where you are going to. But sometimes you find out that when you are moving, when you are migrating, you pass through some countries or some states. Wherever you pass through to get to your final destination is called the transit, transit. country. Mm. Then maybe, maybe I always come to. Come to. <laughs> yes. For reason, yes. maybe I have been in this question. Sure, sure. sure. When you talked yes. about the transit, uh, transit camp and transit yes. whatever country. Yes. Yeah. So then, in addition to what they said about diasporans, you become a diaspora when you do not forget your home. Or that, I just like to put it this way. Okay. There are some persons when they travel, the first thing they tell you is, okay, anything that concerns me and that place that I left, don't bring it close to me. If they don't want to be connected again. Sure. So those persons, even though they are originally citizens of country A, they do not become diasporans because they do not have a link back home. They don't want to be linked back home. They don't have interest in the development of that place. These are migrants that have gone. In another case, there are some persons that were not born in this country A, but using okay. as this instance. But they know that their ancestral home is country A. Okay. So from wherever they are, they still have that link to that place that they had their home. Those people also qualify as diasporans. Okay. Yes. Okay. Well, Quite interesting that. Uh, I mean, some of these terms sometimes are used interchange interchangeably. But sometimes they are used wrongly uh, because you don't even get to understand some of these things. But then, like I always say on this platform, when you have professionals talking to you, of course, the times become clearer. It's a half line mark of the program. Let's take a quick break. When we come back, we look at issues like immigration. Well, I'm sure uh, names like Sadia Faru will come to mind. Uh, <laughs> Neymar will also come to mind sometimes when you are discussing certain issues. We will be right back. Thank you for being the, the program is Dialogue reaching you from the Stables of Liberty and today we are looking at migration and migration issues and uh, I have two professionals in the house doing justice to this. You know there are times you, you, you feel like going back to the class to do geography, uh, physical or regional, I don't know, <laughs> depends on what you want. I have uh, Osata Mary Igbinosan, she's the program officer, Civil Society Network on Migration and Development, not in short as CSO Net Met and the Northwest Zonal Coordinator of the same body, also doubling as the Senior Program Officer of CAF Care Foundation, talking about Umaru Abdul Wahab. Well, may I come to you? The National Migration Policy, I've always had this discussion with some of my colleagues, in fact, senior lecturers in mass communication, that Nigeria doesn't even have 
a national communication program, for instance, that you can actually hold on to. But when we discuss issues like this, we are made to understand there is a national migration policy. What is this about? Okay. The national migration policy exists, yes. Okay. Not many people know about it. It's a policy that tends to guide us in having a good or a better migration governance in Nigeria as we want it. Okay. It contains principles. Every part of the national migration governance points to achieving better migration governance. And one striking thing about the, um, the national migration policy, which was adopted in 2015, is that it creates room for collaboration. Okay. The government now in um, handling migration issues know that it's not what can be handled by one ministry, department, or agency. Okay. So, principle eight or thereabouts of national migration policy provides room for collaboration. The government is calling on everybody that have somehow have a link to migration. Let's come together to tackle these issues that may be problems in migration, okay. and let's have to bring ideas and solutions that will give us a better migration governance in Nigeria. So the National Migration Policy, I don't know if I can call it our holy book in migration okay. governance, okay. it's what we use in Nigeria to ensure we have the better migration governance we desire. Okay. Well, what are you talking about collaboration? Collaboration between who and who? Yeah, the collaboration. All right, the collaboration, first and foremost, start from the uh, coordinating agents, so agency. We have, uh, for example, we have the NCFRMI, which we've mentioned before. Then we have other uh, uh, MD is, uh, NAPTI is there. Okay. We have uh, Ministry of Labor. We also have um, um, uh, the Immigration and uh, the Diaspora Commission is coming there. Yeah. So this, there are lots of them. They are all working one way or the other mm -hmm. in the aspect of migration, including, including the National Commission of uh, Population. So they are the collaboration is needed for them to effectively manage the aspect of migration. So then also the CSOs are the second phase, okay. which come in to support them in achieving this. Uh, because they all go they are majorly, most of the time, at the field. They are also there to see what, in a way, they don't see at times, and gives technical support. Uh, in the course of achieving effective uh, migration governance and equally uh, the external areas where they need to come in to help uh, give some other uh, kind of um, other technicalities uh, in, in the sense of uh, policy aspects where there are gaps, uh, where need to be adjusted and having this uh, moment of understanding to work together in order to achieve the goal. Okay. Yes. When we talk about migration, one complaint you hear most, I mean, often from Nigerians, even from people in government, is our borders are porous. <laughs> I mean, uh, in the northern part, between Katsina, um, yes, between Katsina, uh, Kebi, Sokoto, Borodu, Yobe, for instance, people will count hundreds of, I mean, porous exit and entrance that we have in Nigeria, for instance. So where is the place of border management when we talked about migration? Mm -hmm. All right. So first, just by the wayside, I think someone will jokingly say they need to fence Nigeria. Nigeria needs to be fenced because you can't count the number of people that come in and out every time. But um, it would interest you to know that in the national migration governance structure, there's a thematic working group on border okay. management. Border management. Okay. Yes, yes. I think the immigration is um, the lead of that particular thematic okay. group. Yes. So, of course, you know, the government keeps trying anyway. So yeah. that thematic group helps us to know what happens around the border area. How well is it being managed? Fine, it's an issue in migration, and there's a structure already, the national migration governance structure, mm -hmm. that is working towards seeing how this issue of borders can be controlled. Okay. It's a good thing for trying to shut people out of entry to our country. What we're saying is, let us know who's coming in and who's going out. Because so many people are complaining that this is why there's so much insecurity. Yeah. We find people claiming or saying that these people that are coming to commit atrocities are not even Nigerians okay. because of the porous borders. People around the borderline, they tell you they can't sleep with their two eyes closed because of issues of influx and 
just without monitoring who's coming in and going out. Trust me, it's a serious issue which, of course, the Technical Working Group of Migration on Border Management is really working to see how that can be mitigated. This is not just limited to land. Of course, when we talked about the northern part, well, because of the last, I mean, vast land, so we talked about that. But I, I think, um, okay, one of the last time I was discussing with a friend from Patakos, when he saw the governor of Burundi <laughs> on the Lake Chad, and he was asking, I mean, where is this water from? Uh, again, the same thing. When we saw somebody in Adamawa, I mean, on the waters, and somebody was asking me, you mean in the north you have this kind, this kind of <laughs> rivers? But we know when we talked about boundaries, our boundaries just limited to just land. Yeah, okay. But boundaries? International boundaries. International boundaries. Yes. Uh, yeah, there is a map out uh, a statutory uh, lands okay. and uh, where it is a clear cut demarcation of uh, where you go in. Where, which, for which community it ends, it ends. and where it starts okay. from. So these are very key salient aspects and based on law because they are clearly stipulated in the law. Okay. Uh, but as much as possible, we should also understand that, um, just like she said, uh, in the course of meetings and deliberation where you have uh, most of these NDAs that are responsible for this thematic areas. Like for example, for the land, you have the immigration, immigration. area. Yeah. And sometimes they've been supported by joint uh, uh, this thing, uh, uh, support. Yeah. Uh, we have the police and the rest of them. The customs also come in to give some little hand. But as much as possible, we, we, we still have the issue of um, the coverage is quite a, a very distant uh, kilometers. Okay. So because over time we've talked about um, need enough manpower is so called needed. I'm uh, also looking at uh, the technology, the gadgets that need to be used to track because uh, when those influx or these migrants that are moving or people on the move here are not being captured, then it tends to be a big threat because when they come in, they, 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 are, they are captured, they are data, then when there are issues, uh, with once we have the data on ground, and two, to be able to trace them in case of any eventualities, they can easily be monitored. But where these issues, these uh, instruments are not in, in place, you discover that you have problem of even planning how to address it, how well you should manage the borders. So these are things uh, the technical working group has been coming up in the course of uh, uh, the meetings they've been having, uh, which some of us will be privileged uh, to be part of, okay. to see how best way this can be minimized or addressed completely. Okay. Yes. Well, 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 Mira, let me come to you. I, I just want to go to some technical terms now. Mm -hmm. uh, we often hear, of course, um, I think mm -hmm. more we have NAPTIP here on this platform. Mm -hmm. We're talking about some, some issues. When do we have human trafficking when do we have smuggling, human smuggling? Because these are terms that are used interchangeably. All right, so um, for trafficking in person, in the simplest term, I'll try to break it down. It involves you aiding somebody to migrate. Okay. But now, in that you're aiding, you deceive the person, you force the person, you use your position of power to oppress the person to do so. Okay. So the fact that you aided somebody and you actually carried that person to wherever the person is going to, with your influence or whatever, without the person's consent. Ordinarily, if you had not come in to aid, abet, to push, to press, the person ordinarily would not go on that journey. But the fact that your presence, your influence, your deceit influenced that movement, it amounts to trafficking in persons. Okay. But for smuggling, smuggling of migrants now, I, as a migrant, I pay you to okay. take me somewhere. Okay. So we are both committing the crime okay. against that state to okay. move into it. Okay. But you should know that at some point, even if I pay you money to move me into state B, yeah. At some point, it may turn into trafficking. I was going to ask that question. When, <laughs> you, when, when you must talk, when turn to human because trafficking. Because there's the first time people just say, that's why we have to be careful out there. You try sure. to give somebody money to smuggle you into a country. Yeah. 
you could become a victim of trafficking later. How? At some point, you may be exploited by your smuggler. Okay. Mm. But exploitation comes in at any point. It has amounted to trafficking in person. The most common example of is habits. After giving this person money to take you to country B, when they get to the destination country, that's where they're taking you to, mm. they seize your passports. Yeah. Or they force you to a job you ordinarily would not do. Yeah. So once exploitation starts to come in, then smuggling has been converted to trafficking in person. Okay. Yeah. Well, well, another issue is this issue of facilitated migration or forceful migration. I mean, what's the difference between forceful migration and facilitated migration? Okay, so um, for facilitated migration, just as the name sounds, mm -hmm. whichever way you help facilitate migration, so if you helped me move from point A to point B, yeah. just as the facilitation, once you help me do that, okay. that's where it comes in. Okay. Then um, the other one, which forced, is forced, forced migration, migration, is when you are mm -hmm. made to move out of your own will. You did not intend to move or you are forced to do so. Most times, it's usually uh, man-made, natural disasters, generalized violence that mostly make people move forcefully. Oh, we, okay, just like we had the incident with the Rohingyas mm. who had to move from uh, their country On to their own country. country. Yes. Yes. Okay, yeah. Yeah. okay, yeah. okay. Well, it's only one issue that bothers a lot of people is when you say somebody is stateless. I, I don't know. I mean, a lot of people find it difficult to understand. How can a human being be, be without, without, without a state or without a, without a country, for instance? Yeah, it, it, uh, it does happen when we have um, people, or should I say, yeah, you know, sort of um, they're in the states where um, they're in between boarding town that has not been statutorily clear, clarified okay. that is being owned by a particular state and um, there's this in-between control uh, by the neighboring states okay. yeah like we could remember the case of Bakasi Bakasi uh, yeah. some time ago okay, by, the yes, court because judgment. yeah before then okay. the the they neither here no. nor there the neither in state A and then I say, we sometimes also get uh, some form of support from the other state and some of support from the other state. So they, they've not cleared the uh, definitions of their settlements. Okay. Uh, so that put them in the state of statelessness. Yeah. So you still have few pockets of uh, issues, one way or the other, still springing up, even in our modern days. Okay. Okay. And we're meant to understand there are millions of people around the world sure. who are stateless. Sure. It does happen. Wow. Wow. Okay. I, 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 well, Nigeria is a vast, <coughs> a vast country. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever you, you, whatever way you look at it. I was just discussing with a friend a while ago who traveled between here and Lagos, mm -hmm. and uh, he got, he got, he got to Ondoa in, in Akure, and this is somebody who could speak Yoruba fluently. Mm -hmm. But of course, uh, he was being told that look. You need these particulars of this car, you need that particulars of that car for that state. So since you don't have it here, you must, you must pay for instance. This is within one, one country. Mm -hmm. Here we are in Nigeria, some people are still advocating break up the, break up the country. And we're saying, for instance, take the southeast, for instance. Mm -hmm. The entire southeast is not up to a quarter of the landmass of Niger State, for instance, mm -hmm. just one state, for instance. Mm -hmm. But of course, we know Nigerians move a lot, sure. highly mobile. Sure. Student, for instance. In fact, National Youth Service Corps, because we see students, we see people who go to one part of the nation for National Youth, youth Service Corps, sure. and that is the end. It's like that becomes another a place of, home. of, of, resi of residence. Uh, yeah, for them, a second home. Mm -hmm. uh, for, the, for some of us, the places that we did our NYC, mm -hmm. though we didn't go back there, but it's a second home to us. Mm -hmm. that any issue that has to affect those places, that affect those places, we take it sure. uh, past that. Well, let, let's look at it. How can we actually utilize migration to develop our country? I so I'm looking at it now locally. Mary, start with you. All right. So um, locally, first you have to first have the mindset, host countries in a state now. Okay. We're talking about within Nigeria now. Yes. You have to first know that these people that are coming into your state are not threats. Like you said earlier, don't always picture them as yeah, as threats, unless proven otherwise. Mm -hmm. Anyway. So when they come in, they bring in businesses, they bring in development wherever they are coming from. 
So whatever it is that they come in, they paint as their taxpayers in that particular area, they pay their revenues and all. Just see them as people that have come to develop your state. Only you cannot develop your state. There are things, there are some states that are highly commercial states now because of migrants that came in. Mm -hmm. Like what I said earlier, don't stay in a place that you don't say an Igbo man. Mm -hmm. When Igbos come in, the set of business in mm -hmm. that area begins to boom. I'm just using them as an example. Yeah. So that's like, so when migrants are coming in, try to utilize whatever positive thing they are bringing in to develop your state. I, I wouldn't be surprised Mr. Boris neighbor in Kami said about this. Because it's like I always say, there are things you cannot do in your own hometown. Okay. But once you move out of your own hometown, you wouldn't mind doing those things to make to make change. Yeah, sure. So how can we utilize migration to our own development, development yeah. of our society? Well, society, uh, you see, uh, most of these migrants, so uh, it's an human inherent thing yeah. that at the time people tend to move to another community to resettle. They are being exposed to so many things. They also see uh, opportunities which they've not seen before in the new communities they are resettling. Okay. So they tend to now harness it. Okay. And in doing that, or exploit rather, and in doing that, it's rub off on other members of the community mm -hmm. that are there. That becomes a very good thing for the community to benefit from. Just like she said. So it, it goes like, for example, uh, you migrate from an, from this state to another state, and you realize that there are opportunities you never had in your state of uh, origin mm -hmm. to this state of uh, destination. So you discover that at the time you begin to exploit these skills or opportunities you found. It definitely is not, not going to be a one-man show. Others around you will benefit, and definitely is going to be the host community. Mm -hmm. So this is how we, as a, a nation, as a state, should be looking at. There are so much countless of benefits migrants has contributed, mm -hmm. and so we should be able to look at the positive side more. Of. Nevertheless, still be checkmating where we have those that are few of them. And continues as I won't with with the study we've had over years, even those international migrants. I think for I could remember that of Nigerians to other countries that have migrated. Uh, you 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 hear so many of them doing wonderfully well there. And the ones that constitute nuisance there are just few, very, very, very few. Very few. You know that the 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 ugly news yeah. run faster and spread wide. Mm -hmm and forgetting that they have those that are abiding by the laws of the land and doing a lot of businesses and genuine and legitimate jobs mm -hmm. that are adding so much to the revenue of those countries. Mm -hmm. So as much as possible, we here should be looking at that aspect. Okay. General Babaji, let us mark his uh, 80th birthday on, on Tuesday, 17th of August. Uh, very, <laughs> and uh, uh, for me personally, I know the issue of brain drain actually came to the Nigerian Lexicon with General Babangida's administration. <laughs> but now we talked about brain drain, yes. we talked about brain waste, we talked about brain dead. I just want you to just put it out there for the, for the, for the viewer. Listen. Okay. All right. So for brain gain, yeah. just imagine gain, the word gain. When, bring, when experts come in, when migrants come in and they bring in development, they okay. tend to contribute skillfully, it's gain for us. So that's brain gain for migration terminologies. Yeah. Then brain drain. When our skilled experts are going out, mm. our doctors are going out in mass, our lawyers are going out. Mm. They are going out does not mean that the brain drain. But we will now have less of those persons here yeah. who are skillful okay. because most of them have gone out. Then is oh. drain. Mm. Then brain wastes, <laughs> like the example we always use, where the medical doctor goes abroad to start washing plates or mm. doing cleaning jobs mm. and all. So, but it's not waste when that person is trying to gather experience anyway, but it's waste when that person actually goes there and that's what the person goes to do. You know, some countries will tell you that you need to have a specific time for experience before you can get good jobs. Okay. So, in that situation, it's not a waste. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Well, what about brain dead? I uh, get something like brain dead. I think it's just a term that no, it's not. It's not brain dead. We, we, can, we can't have a brain dead. No, no, no not yet. We don't have okay. that in migration yes. technologies. Okay. Yes. Yes. Brain is a three 
Okay. Well, you know, it's common with our doctors and uh, those, our academic. <laughs> uh, they, you know, we always say in Nigeria, those that we don't care much about go outside the country and excel uh, at, the, at the end of the day. Um, there was one question that, that just escaped me. Oh, looking at some of, some of these concepts, uh, brain drain, brain waste, uh, <laughs> you know, remittances, oh, rem remittances and, and so many other, other things. But then, of course, we know we have issues around this. We have issues around this. How can we actually utilize, utilizing the media, yes, is one thing, to actually showcase what migrants have done. How can we tell the stories of migrants to make it look a positive thing and not negative thing the way people look at it? Yeah, uh, I think that's on the aspects of awareness okay. and uh, sensitization, uh, where we have to, um, <coughs> the NCFNY, which is the coordinating agency, okay. it's the collaboration of other NDEs mm -hmm. working on migration. Uh, we engage also with the CSO civil society organization, okay. uh, which is a voice also uh, for the most vulnerable and those that are being affected as migrants uh, speaking on their behalf, um, also engaging the media like you guys and making sure that uh, the aspect of um, the benefit as, and the advantages mm -hmm. of migration is laudable. Okay. Then also try to discourage irregular migration, migration. Okay. because it ends up most of uh, those that embark on it, uh, is that they, they, they die in the process. Seen that they in Libya. Go through, yeah. And the some, see some never even the get to their, to their uh, transit. To, okay. Yes, not even control. Mm -hmm. The transit aspect, some never even reach there on the way. They die because of the harsh condition. While those that even get to their this, the transit states uh, also face similar things and abuses here and there. Mm -hmm. And while others, few of them end up getting to their uh, place of destination mm -hmm. state. So as much as possible, these are areas of emphasis that need to be lighted in, the, yes, in the, the media, okay. which is very key. Okay, you know, by way of rounding up, I actually want you to break this down for us. In Nigeria, one of the one of the commonest terms today is refugee. Who is a refugee? Who is an IDP? And who is an asylum seeker? Okay, so I'm just trying to think where do I start from? Okay, okay so from the IDP, which yeah. popularly know, they are uh, internally displaced Passage. persons. Mm -hmm. These are people for no cost of theirs circumstances beyond their control, it could be man-made, natural, generalized violence, they are forced to flee from their habitual places of residence. Okay. They are fleeing now is that they do not go across international borders, they are okay. still within mm -hmm. a country. Okay. So that's why they are called internally displaced persons. Okay. But for asylum seekers, now you are running for safety. You are running from harm, either natural again, whatever it is, political, anything, okay. whatever it is that is chasing you from, and you feel there is a threat to your life and you have to run. So you go across an international border to seek for protection. Okay. So you are called an asylum seeker because during the process of seeking for that protection, no. that status has not been granted to you. Okay. So you are still an asylum seeker. Yeah. Well, immediately that status is granted to you, you become a, a refugee. refugee. So asylum seeking is just the process of being refugee. a refugee. Mm. In another state. In another state, an international state. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, I think let's just leave it at that. Because mm -hmm. if we take another two hours, I'm sure the <laughs> questions will not <laughs> the questions will not they keep coming. You know. Thanking our resource people today from my immediate left we have a uh, Osato Mary Ibedoso. I hope I got that right. Yes, very <laughs> much. <All right. laughs> yeah. This is the program of the Civil Society Network on Migration and Development, known in short as CSO Net. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for having me. I, I hope we don't migrate to my neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, Umaru Abdul Wahab is the Northwest Sonal Coordinator of CSO Net and he also doubles as the Senior Program Officer of CapCare Foundation. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. My pleasure. All right. Well, your first time being here. Yes. Uh, I'm sure it's not going to be the last. <laughs> <laughs> so, Abuja, <laughs> Kanu, Keduna, wherever you go, just ask of liberty. <laughs> we'll give you a liberty. All right. <laughs>
<laughs> On that note, we end the program today. Thank you for investing your time with us. Well, when the end the program come, my colleague Anthony Momodu will pick it up from here. I am Abdul Aziz Ahmed Kader. Have a wonderful day ahead. <laughs>